this episode, we learn some awesome new skills to wow our friends, get up close with some slimy sea creatures, and hear some pet keeping tips from our friendly vet, Dr. Beck. I'm Emily and welcome to Juice TV. We're on location at Lady Salento Children's Hospital. We have an absolutely awesome episode for you today, but first let me introduce myself. It's time to get to know your host. She is a spelling whiz, plays the guitar, and is a nickname for Thieven after an animated dog. It's Emily. I'm 12 years old. My favourite hobby is eating chocolate. I can go through a whole bucket of M&Ms in a day. My favourite movie character is Hermione Granger because she's smart, funny and whole lots of fun. My favourite song is Like a Drum by Gar Sebastian and it goes a little something like this. Like a drum. I'm really good at eating. <laughs> My best party trick is pulling a Stephen face. It goes a little something like this. This is my best dance move. If I could go anywhere in the world, it would be a place called Unicorn Land, which is an imaginary place, but you know, realistic to me. If I could have a superpower, it would be to have a bottomless stomach so I could eat more and more M&Ms. The grossest food in the world would have to be octopus. Enough about me, now let's get on to the show. Now we're gonna meet Michael the Dream Guard who's gonna show us an easy trick to wow your friends. Hey boys and girls, Michael back again from the Dream Guards. Gonna tell you the story. I was down at the park the other day and I was giving my mate a thumbs up because he was doing the coolest bike trip ever. But as I'm doing that, this magpie came down, grabbed my thumb and just took off with it. He must have thought it was a sausage, but he didn't like it. He spat it out. I went, I grabbed my thumb, I oh! I took it to the doctors because amazing doctors here were able to put it back together again. I thought, that's amazing, thank you very much. But I'm not sure, if, if, can you tell me, is this normal? Ha, ah, ha, ah, oh. <laughs> oh. uh, no, just drink it. You can try this. You can come up with your same story and how you lost your thumb, right? Okay? So you just go and eat. They reattach my thumb, but then you go as this normal. So what you're doing, you see, look, you're just bending that thumb. If you bend that thumb over, all right, then this thumb is bent over as well, but you're replacing the finger. So it's too lost. You join that in here behind this one, and then it's just a case of, ah, oh. It's a good one to freak out mum, dad, your doctors, and your nurses. Just like that, see? Doesn't even hurt. Hey, all my tricks don't leave scars. <laughs> Here's another one, all right? I think you'll like this one. Check out this. My little friend in here. Look at him, Mr. Plasty, I call him. Look, I'll put a little face on him. You gotta check him, he's very, very cool, all right? Check this out, okay, you're right, you're gonna love it. Oh, oh, always pull out the longest hair because it gets in the way of my collar. All right, so if we tie this around here, cool, excellent. Oh, I let go, hang on. Oh, here he is, here he is. All right, cool, watch, you ready, you ready? Oh, I know! I put, I put it, okay, I put it in. Oh, I need my, I need my scissors. Have you seen my, have you seen my, I've got them. I've got my scissors. I've got my, <laughs> okay, cool, okay. Ah, oh, all right, excellent. <laughs> Mr. Plassey, he's amazing. He loves to limbo as well. He loves to limbo. You want to check this out? Here we go. Oh, limbo, 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 rock the limbo, limbo. <laughs> and he's back again. Oh, limbo, 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 rock the limbo. <laughs> well done, well done, Mr. Plastic. Uh, no, 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 take a bow, take a, take a bow, take a, take a bow, take a bow, and take a bow, and uh, thank you, thank you. All right, I'm gonna show you how to do this. It's an amazing and cool little piece of the, all right. What you need is any Ziploc bag, all right? Come down here into my little wizard tree bag, all right? We go into here. Just grab yourself a Ziploc bag. Any Ziploc bag, and then get yourself a cool little safe pair of scissors. And what we do, right, 
is we just snip this up here. If we snip this, okay, and we're snipping off. Oops, here we go, we'll get this. Bang, all right, put that in the rubbish bin. And then, with this here, you just snip off the bottom, all right? Just one, one end. So now, when you place it between the two fingers here and your thumbs in the middle, all right? And then if you bend your thumb, whoa! And if you push your thumb up, whoa! So you can do amazing feats with the plastic. You can just go, and, okay, okay, this way. That way. This way. Uh, now that, that simple. Glad bag. And you can put your little face on, you can do that sort of thing as well. It's just an amazing piece. Amaze your friends, your family, mums, dads, nurses. Freak them out, it's good fun. Here's another thing that you can freak the nurses. Alright. You can make an amazing telescope that can see through your hands. Grab yourself an A4 sheet, all right? What you want to do is roll up the A4 sheet, all right, into a telescope, all right? So we do that, you roll it up here, all right? Get your finger in here just to make it nice and tight. And then tell somebody that you've got the most amazing telescope that can see through hands, all right? Get them to put the telescope up to their eye, closing the left eye, opening the right eye. And then get them to take this hand, put it against the telescope, and then tell them to open the left eye. And so both eyes are opening. <gasps> oh my goodness, there's a hole right through my hand. There's a hole through my hand, it's hand. It's hard to see on TV, but trust me, try it yourself. Blow your own mind before you can blow the minds of your brothers and sisters, mums, dads, and all the nurses and doctors. Freak them out with your very own magic telescope. That's amazing. You kids have been amazing. We thank you so much for your great patience and amazing, amazing manners. Thank you for having the Dream Guards. And don't forget, as Dream Guards, our job is to make sure that your dreams are safe and ideas are secure. Always believe. Believe in yourself and don't forget be an upstander, not a bystander when it comes to bullying. And just remember, high five, peace. One, two, three, peace. Thanks, Michael. I'll be trying that one out. Now the boys from Freestyle Football are going to show off their fancy footballer. time for freestyle football. I'm hanging out with the guys. I've got Joe and Curtis with me. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. This whole freestyle football thing is actually pretty fancy. Fancy footwork. Thanks. Fancy freestyle football. That's what it should be called. Yeah. I mean, it's really fun. Um, we got into it uh, because we saw videos on the internet and we were like, wow, I want to learn how to do that. And um, we spent time just practicing and practicing and it's really fun. And now you do all this sort of really cool stuff. So you didn't play soccer beforehand? Oh, I did. I played soccer for about 10 years. Yeah. So it does help to have a little bit of skill there. Now, Curtis, I believe there's a performance and a competition element to freestyle football. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, there is. Um, I've been freestyling for about uh, seven years now. I've uh, travelled around Australia, around the world, performing and competing. But um, for me, the best thing is just pretty much just training with mates and trying to get better. You know, it's not all about performing and competing. It's just uh, having a good time. So. Yeah. But you can be honest. This is a safe circle. Is there a little bit of competition when it comes to training time? Do you try and one-up each other all the time? Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's, it's easy with this guy. Like, oh! So. <laughs> Let the chat begin. Prove that. Prove that, man. Prove that. Now, Joe, let's break it down. It's called freestyle football, but you're not just using your feet. You're using pretty much the whole body. That's it. I mean, you can use any part of the body you want. Um, it's all about learning tricks and then combining them together into combos, being creative, just having fun, you know? And um, essentially, freestyle football is breaking, broken into about three different categories. Okay, so you've got the upper body, which is doing tricks with your head. Lower body is doing tricks standing up with your feet. Yeah. And sit downs is sitting on the ground juggling the ball. Okay, so you've got categories. Within the categories, you've got different tricks. So is it kind of the same as skateboarding if you've got like an ollie and a 360 and all these moves that everyone around the world tries to master? Yeah, um, because every trick has a name and you can string those tricks together into combinations and people communicate all around the world um, by talking about combinations of tricks and 
Um, I remember when I was in Europe, um, I was meeting some of the best freestyle footballers in the world, and um, a lot of them didn't speak English, so I couldn't really communicate with them. But we could both speak the language of freestyle, so we could give each other combinations to do. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was really great, it was good fun. Awesome, that sounds good. And speaking of tricks and combos, I'm gonna put you guys on the spot. Do you have a favorite trick or combo that you can do for us right now? You get a little bit more thinking time. You're first. Yeah, well, one of my favorite tricks is called alternate homie Michi around the world. Alternate homie Michi. Here we go. Brought to you by Joe. Let's see what this looks like. Wow. That's a, that's a lot of air. Yep. You, you're getting there. Yeah, just jump over it. Yep. Cash, just jump yep. over it. Curtis, your turn. Take the ball. What is the name of your favourite trick? My favourite trick? Uh, one of my favourite tricks is called the, the carousel. While it's very simple, it's also one of the most stylish tricks that I do, so I think I'll just... He's trying to talk himself yeah. up. This is that Good. competition trick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just get in the eye shot. All right, give us a look. Oh, that's pretty. Very talented. And I think that that could be my cue to get out of here and uh, leave things to you guys. Okay, guys, I'm going to give you some pro tips on how to learn to freestyle. Okay, so there's a couple of things that you need to get right before you start learning, okay? You need the right type of shoes, okay? You need some indoor soccer shoes, something like that, okay? Um, if you're young, maybe um, under 12, um, you might want to start with a size 4 because you want a ball that fits your body right, okay? Curtis is going to show you some basics. Now, what he's doing right now is juggling. I'm sure you've all seen this before, but it's the foundation of freestyle. So it's all about having perfect control over the ball so that at any point he can decide to do a trick and he's got perfect control. Another good foundational trick is the footstool. There we go. So it's all about balance. And you'll notice how Curtis is grabbing the ball a bit and just holding it up against his shin. That makes it a lot easier as well. Okay, guys, now for something a little bit more advanced. Uh, another trick that's great to learn is called head stall. Now, Curtis is going to show us a head stall. All right, so it's all about balance. Now, it's a bit tricky at the start. You might find it easier if you just place the ball up there and then start just trying to follow it around with your body like that. Um, once you get the hang of it, it's actually not that hard. Okay guys, now we're going to show for you how to learn to do sit-down juggles. Now, I know this looks pretty hard, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. Okay, now you'll notice how Curtis is juggling the ball here on his laces. Um, it's, a, it's a bit like learning to juggle all over again because the angle is a bit different, so it can, it can get a bit frustrating. But this is why Curtis is in front of a wall here, because if he makes a mistake, ball comes back to him and he can keep going. Once you get the hang of juggling like Curtis has, um, you can try something a bit more difficult like uh, kicking the ball towards your head and back to your feet, like that. Okay, you'll notice Curtis is um, using his forehead to hit it back. He's hitting it on the front of his forehead, back to his feet. Another thing we can show for you is shin juggles. Now this is a lot harder. Juggling the ball on the shin, like that. Now. All of this, once you get the hang of it, it's not too hard. It's just a bit frustrating at the beginning. You keep working at it and you can get there. you to be a part of Juice TV. We're always on the lookout for hosts, interviewers, behind the scenes helpers and mini producers. You can be any age, you don't have to have any experience. How much easier could it be? To find out the next time we're filming at the hospital, just head to our website, juicedtv.com.au or our Facebook page. For loads of fun to break up your stay in hospital, join the Juice crew. Send us an email at hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to any of the volunteers wearing green shirts throughout the hospital and let them know you want to be involved in the one and only Juice TV. It would be great to brush your dog's teeth every couple of days, so about twice a week. You would need to do it with special doggy toothpaste, which you can get from your local vet. The other things that you'll need to do to make sure they have a great set of teeth 
is raw bones and it's important to remember raw and not cooked bones because they can splinter off and cause their bellies to get upset. The other things include dental diets if they're really bad, dental treats as well as dental toys. And if you do all these things, you'll make sure your puppy has a beautiful smile for life. Thanks Dr Beck, now we've got Ocean Life to show us some cool sea creatures. Hi, my favourite animal is the sea cucumber. Thank you very much for having me here, Vinny. It's good to see you guys here with these animals today. Yeah. Um, my first question is, what is your job and what do you do? All right, I have a really cool job, Ebony. What I do is I take animals around to all the schools and all the childcare centres and do lots of events and I try and educate people about the animals that we've got here that live in the sea because they're really important and we need to look after them. They all have a really important job to do. They all look and feel the way they do for a reason. So if the more we know about them and more everyone understands how they are and what they do, then the more likely we are to look after them and then that way we're looking after the environment, aren't we? Have you saved animals? I have saved animals before. I've saved turtles before and I've even saved a whale before. Cool. That's pretty cool. It what was cool. type of whale? It was a humpback whale. It was a baby humpback whale that was caught in shark nets up off Coolum oh, a few man. years ago. But you know what? It had a happy ending. We got him out, back out to sea, and mum and baby were doing little happy dance around, and then they went back down south, back home. That was pretty cool. Yeah, and what happened with the turtles? Well, with the turtles, well, do you know what? The turtles get affected by our rubbish and our pollution. So sometimes they eat plastic bags and things like that, and they get all sorts of problems with them. We're getting caught inside. Getting caught inside them, yep. So what we've done was we've had turtles that had this problem, and then we've been able to fix them by having looking after them, and then we let them go back out to sea again. But you know what? There's lots of other ones out there that we miss. So we really need to do something about our rubbish and look after the animals better, don't That's we? That's what I never litter around anywhere because I know that animal, if animals eat it, they can die from Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But we need animals to live as well. They're important, aren't they? We've got to look after yeah. them. Good work. Let's get to the sea stars. Oh, very good. Yes. I'm glad um, you call them sea stars too. Of course they're sea stars because they live in the sea and they're stars. And they're not a fish, are they? No. Good work. All right, so we've got the name right. Excellent. What would you like to know about them? Um, I want to know, why do they have colours? Oh, that's a good question. They're not all the same colour, are they? No. Do you know why? It's because they live in different parts of the sea. Some of them, like the blue ones here, are found in the coral reef. So they've got that beautiful colour to hide in amongst all the colourful corals. What's the word called again when animals use colour to hide where they live? Cam habitat. Camouflage in their habitat, that's right. They camouflage in their habitat where they live so they don't get found, so they don't get eaten. That's why these ones are blue. Then we've got these big ones over here. They're a bit of an orangey brown colour. So they ones, they probably live in amongst, more amongst the rocks and the weed and the sand of the ocean. So depending on where they're found, their colour is to help them hide or to camouflage where they live. Well, I have a question about the blue. Yeah. Why are they so rough at the top and soft near the bottom? All right. They're hard on top, aren't they? And they're smoothed underneath. Yeah. Okay. Well, they need to be tough on top because these sea stars live where the waves crash and bash on top of them on the rocks and on the corals. So they need tough bodies to protect them in that harsh environment. But because the waves are crashing on, on the top of them, underneath where they're sitting on the rocks all the time, they're quite smooth, but they're still hard. So yeah. that's why they're tough, to protect them. Were they able to have a little pat? I think you should have a little pat. We're gonna see how we're gonna go. Let's go, let's have a pat. How does it feel? It feels a little bumpy. Yep. But in here it feels smooth. And smooth. Do you know why he gets to feel that hard? We know it's to protect him. Yeah. But what they do is they suck water into their body. And they, they can have 
nice. Yep, and they hold it in their body really tight under lots of pressure so that they can be tough so the waves don't hurt them and pull them apart. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. It's kind of weird. You think that they can move, but they're so hard, so how do they move? I know some facts about sea stars. First, there's little dots that's in on the bottom of them and that makes them crawl around. Then there's this little tiny star at the, in the middle of it and that's the mouth and if they're hungry, they suck out their stomach and eat and go over, their, over the food and then they suck it back in again. Look. You see all those little tube feet? He's moving around. Yeah. So What's he doing? Well, he's probably looking for food because he's been in that container this afternoon and he's probably looking around for food. And he likes to eat food called algae. Do you know what algae is? No. It's a plant-like material. And like all plants, it needs sunlight to grow. So that's why they're found in the shallow water where the waves crash and bash on them, because they're there to try and eat the algae. OK? Hey, now, is if the that algae... like a bit of seaweed or something? Well, it's a bit like seaweed, yeah. It's like a little fine plant that lives on the rocks and on the corals in the shallow water. So they're there eating the algae off the rocks and the corals. But where you get shallow water, you get the waves crashing and bashing. So that's why yeah. they need to be tough. Would I want to touch him? Yeah, you, I'll tell you what, if you touch him really carefully along that groove where all those little tube feet are, you watch. If you do it gently, he'll tuck those little tube feet away. See how you go, because you want to protect them, because they're soft. See that? Run your finger all the way along. They feel funny. Actually, you're being so gentle, he's not even worried about that. Can you believe that? I got one last question about the sea stars. Yes. How do they eat? That is a very good question. All right. The sea stars have an unusual way of eating their food. See right in the middle there? Right in the middle where all their tubed feet meet? Yeah. Well, that's where their mouth is. Now, when a sea star wants to eat their food, they crawl over the top of their food and they spit their tummy outside their mouth. They soak up the food across their tummy and when they've had enough, they suck their tummy back inside their body again. Right in the middle underneath, do you remember what we said about that? Uh, no, I know, don't, don't say it. What, what does he do? Tummy. That's his, where his tummy is, yeah. And what does he do with it? Does it stay in there or does it, what happens with his tummy? It comes... Yeah, where he goes. <laughs> yeah, it comes... Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to say it? No. No, are you sure? I don't want you to say it. Oh, you say it then. What does he do with his tummy? He spits it out and he stops it. Tummy back in. Oh, he does. He sucks his tummy. That's a weird way to eat. Is Mum going to eat her dinner like that tonight? No. I don't know. I reckon. Do you think she's done it before? No. no I hope not. Do you know why they need to do it? No. Because where do we say they get their food from? They off get... the rocks in the shallow water. So you try eating your rocks off the shallow water with the waves crashing and bashing all over the top of you. You're going to be able to get your knife and fork out to eat the algae off the rocks. But so how are they going to eat? Have... If you have the sticky parts, yep. you will. And that's right, you've got sticky parts that hold on while the waves are crashing and bashing, and then the only way you can eat your food while all that's happening is to spit your tummy out from underneath your mouth, soak up your food, suck your tummy back inside your body, and move to another part of the rock and do the same thing. Does that make you know, sense now? Yeah, but yeah. I got one thing to say. Well, yes. Last, a couple of years ago, when I was walking, when I was walking like more than five years ago, yeah. um, what happened was I was down at Ivory Clan, New South Wales, and I kept running across the beach. Yep. And I saw a massive flake come, yeah. and it went over me, but a man over there, I didn't know who he was, but a big starfish, one of these starfish, fell on his head and he couldn't get it off. It fell out of the wave on his head? Wow, you are so lucky to have seen that and, because that'd be one he, in a million. He couldn't took it, take it off his head. Did he look funny? Yeah, I called him Star Starman. Starman. His name wasn't David Bowie, was it? Spiky. Why is it brown and spiky? Well, like with a lot of the other animals, the brown colour probably helps it hide and camouflage will be hidden amongst the rocks. So that's why the colour. Now the spikes 
It's got a few different reasons for those spikes. Doesn't it have poison in their body? Well, no, they don't have poison, and but some sea urchins are venomous. Okay, some have venom in their spines to help protect them even more, so they don't get eaten by predators and sharks from above. But they also use their spines for walking along the bottom of the ocean looking for food. Did you know that some fish have learnt to flick them upside down and smash them and eat them from underneath where their spines are short? So then the sea urchins use their spines to wedge in amongst the rocks and the corals so the fish can't flick them upside down and eat them. So the spines of the sea urchins are really important to them. Very spiky. Prickly. A bit like a spiky hairbrush? No. My hairbrush is pretty spiky. So Ebony, all these animals we've seen in here today, which one's your favourite and why? Um, my favourite is the red starfish. It's like, you like the red starfish? Do we call them starfish or we call them sea stars? Sea stars. And why is he your favourite? Because it likes me patting it. It likes you, it did seem to like you patting it. And it feels really nice and it looks nice. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Do you know what? You're the only person I've ever seen pat a sea star from underneath and not have his feet tuck away. That's the first time I've ever seen that. So you're very clever. I think, I think, I, uh, I think it likes me. I think it does too. Do you think we'll call him a name? Are you going to give him a name? Yeah. What are we going to call him? I'm gonna call him um, Reggie. Reggie. I like Reggie. Good um, word. Reggie the sea star. I wanna say something yes. before we go. I wanna thank you for coming and bringing all the animals. Oh, thank, you know what? Thank you for letting me come and help teach you all about them because they're pretty cool animals and we've learnt lots today, haven't we? Yeah. Do you think we need to look after them? I think we should stop littering and start helping to help survive, make animals survive yes. and protect them. Absolutely. From damage awesome. and disease. Absolutely. Very good. Thanks Ocean Life. Now I have a funny joke for you guys. Why did the shark spit out the clown? Because he tasted funny. Did you know that the sharks have been around for over 400 million years. That's longer than the dinosaurs and they're pretty old. Check out this video that we found that has real life glowing sharks. They glow! We started to go down um, when we were in the Solomon Islands. We were trying to get the sharks close enough that we could film them. And we also went to a series of aquariums. And it turns out that the, some of the smaller sharks, the, the cat sharks, are brilliantly fluorescent, as bright as some of the brightest fish, as bright as the corals. When you see the images, when you see it's all over, it's in their eyes, it's, um, it's down their skin. That's all we have time for today. See you next time, bye. Remember guys, it's so easy to be a part of Juice TV. Whether you want to be a host, help us out behind the scenes with filming, or decide what goes into each episode, let us know you want to be involved by sending an email to hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to one of the friendly volunteers throughout the hospital in the green shirts. Also head to our website and Facebook page for all the updates about what we're filming at the hospital. Hello, my name's Emily and I'm the little oh, me. <laughs> Enough about me. Mm -hmm. Now the boys from foot 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 Too many F's. Thanks, Dr. Beck. Now we've got thingy thingy. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Do it again.